Hey guys, what's up? James here from Embark and today I wanted to talk to you about the power of compound interest. So as you may know, compound interest is a term frequently used with regards to economics. The great Albert Einstein once said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. And some people sort of really struggle to get their heads and wrap their heads around it with regards to the mathematics behind compound interest. So let's take a look at a practical example and, and just go through it. So you put a sum of money, 1,000 pounds here, into your bank. Now, once it's in the bank, this is called the principal. Your bank pays you an interest of 10% on the principal every year in this example. So in the first year, you receive 100 pounds from the bank in interest. That's a total of 10% of your principal. Now you leave that money in the bank, the earned interest, you leave that in the bank and therefore the principal now in the bank totals 1,100 pounds. So now in the second year, you'd receive 110 pounds from the bank in interest. That's 10% of the 1,100 pounds of principal. And you leave the money in the bank and now the principal totals 1,210 pounds. Pounds. This would continue year after year if you left the money in the bank, didn't take any money out. The increase of the principal does not seem huge at first, but the power of compounding really becomes apparent over time. After 30 years, that initial £1,000 would be worth nearly £17,500. So check out this graph here to really visualise and see how powerful the exponential growth can be. Now, that example of 10% yield from your bank account is just not the case in, in any UK banks at the moment. The actual current amount of interest you'd earn in a UK bank is 0.01% interest, which is absolutely terrible. Even Starling Bank, who I bank with, is 0.05% interest, which, you know, it, it was 0.1% when I initially joined, 0.05% at the moment, which is not great, but it is still better than HSBC, NatWest, Barclays, everything like that. And I'll be doing a review of Starling Bank soon as well. So if you're interested in that, subscribe, and that will be coming shortly. So when banks pay you this interest on the money you have as a principal, um, where does that money come from? Well, you know, effectively, the money that you have in the bank isn't really there. In the world, it's a pretty good rule of thumb that if you don't pay for a service, you are the service. And this is the same for banks. You can get free current account with literally every single um, bank in the UK. But as soon as you put money into that bank, it's then loaned out to someone else, whether that be to an individual for a small loan or to an SME for a business loan. Your money isn't technically there. It's just a bunch of digits on a screen. And yeah, when you go to the ATM, draw out your money, you will get that cash out. But at any one point, they'll pull that money from other accounts. If every single person was to withdraw their money in one go, the bank would really struggle because they literally don't have it. And I know this is the case in America. I can't remember if this is the case in the UK, but at any one point, banks can be loaning out up to like 10 times more money than they actually have. And this is something that I might cover in another video because it's a little bit technical, but just understand that the money's not technically there, it's just digits on a screen. So these banks loan out your money, let's say as a home improvement loan. This one here from HSBC is currently at 3.1% interest rate. That means that the person who takes out this loan has to pay back the bank 3.1% interest for that loan. So let's say that home improvement loan is 10,000 pounds, over a 60 month period, the bank would receive a total of 792 pounds in interest and they'd pay you four pound for your troubles. So that's the difference between how they're lending their money and how much they make compared to what they're currently giving you. So banks make interest work massively for them, but there are ways that you can do it too. So if you were to invest in the FTSE 100, you'd be receiving an average annualized return of 7.75%. Now, this is obviously far superior to putting your money in a bank. Um, however, this is an average over the whole duration of the FTSE 100 since its inception in 1984. 
So, you know, you could take a 10 year snapshot from one period, let's say 2005 to 2015, and you're potentially not gonna be performing that well because of the financial crash. You always have to take into account the fact that this should be always thought of as long-term. If you're gonna invest, it's long-term. You can't think about five, 10 year slots. You have to think 20, 30, 40 years. There's a reason that short-term loans from banks are gonna cost you more. You know, they're gonna charge more for that compared to a long-term loan. It's because it's more risk for them on the short term and therefore they're gonna increase the amount of interest and make it worth their while. So how powerful is compound interest? And you know, can it be used by younger people? The answer is extremely powerful. You know, this creates millionaires every single day. And yeah, younger people can not only use compound interest, but because of their age, they actually have a advantage because they have a better time frame in which to capitalize on the compound interest and the mechanics behind it. So here's a graph from The Art of Manliness and uh, it outlines it pretty well. So a guy at 25 years old starts investing $1,000 for 10 years at an interest of 8%. At the age of 65, his portfolio is worth $157,000. Bear in mind, he's not saved any money since the age of 35. He only saved the money from 25 to 35. Past that age, he's spending everything. He's not saving any extra. It's just that initial 10 year savings and investments. Guy number two, however, does the same, but he starts at 35 years old and continues investing that $1,000 at 8%, but for a 30 year period, all the way until he's 65. But due to the differing time frame, his portfolio is only worth $122,000, and he's invested three times more cash than guy number one. And this is where I kind of get disheartened with the fact that compound interest just isn't really taught in schools that often, um, if ever, really, because it takes people years to find and figure out compound interest as a concept. And sometimes at that point, it's too late. Whereas if this was taught at a young age and drilled into people in economics classes or you know, just in basic math classes to younger students, how many kids would be way more interested in building their wealth and investing in the future? Effectively, a 20-year-old would need to invest $500 a month at 8% interest until they're 30 years old. Stop investing altogether, and by the time they're 50, they'd have around $460,000. This is enough money where the interest paid out each year on the principal in the bank or in the portfolio would be $35,000. You know, you can live off of that at age 50, no worries. And if you waited another 10 years and retired at, let's say, 60 and dipped into that money, it would double from 460,000 to just over 1 million. And this is the true power, $500 a month from 20 to 30 years old. That is really possible. You know, it sounds possible. It's pretty simple, really. Might be hard work from 20, 21, 22 years up, but you know, as you get a little bit older there, it might be 300 a month initially, and then going up to five, six, 700 a month towards the 28, 29, 30 years old. But from 20 to 30, just $500 a month, that's, that's pretty doable. And maybe if this was taught to students when they're younger in school, we'd have a whole range of people who are financially stable and financially maybe even independent, you know, when they're 30, 40 years old. I mean, like what a reward system that is, it's ridiculous. Say $500 a month from 20 to 30 years old, wait 30 years and you're guaranteed to be a millionaire. Like that's crazy. Yeah, sure, there's inflation comes in, but that that there as a concept is, is just mad. And the fact that it's not taught to people in schools is just ridiculous. And you can even spend all your wages and all your income from 30 years onwards. You know, you've done that investing from 20 to 30 years. It's just sat there, you don't have to touch it. You can then just enjoy your life, spend as much money as you want, obviously do more investing, but you don't have to worry about it. That is your retirement fund. That is gonna set you for life just that 10 years of hard work um, and only $500 a month. It's not a huge amount. And sure, yeah, 
I've simplified this down, but the concept itself is extremely real and hundreds and thousands of people use compound interest to their advantage every single day. And now you've watched this video, maybe you will too. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and comment down below if you wanna see more finance videos from me. I've been James from Embark and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Thank you.